that caught my eye. The northern hemisphere has a punishing heat wave infestation. All right, <laughs> Matt Zafino in, in the studio with me now. This is obviously very interesting because we just went through a pretty historic heat wave here in the Pacific Northwest with historically high temperatures. And Matt, I wanted to say, uh, what's your input on this? These heat domes, as they're being right. branded now, mm -hmm. um, are they more prevalent? Are we seeing them more right now than we have in the past globally? Well, first of all, the Capital Weather Gang that wrote that story for the Washington Post they know how to write a headline. Yeah, I totally sure. will give them that for sure. Um, the infestation of high pressure systems. Some of this is really very normal. Some of it, though, is very abnormal. I mean, think about it. We set an all time record high temperature here right. in Portland, right? Lit in Canada set an all time record high temperature for the entire country when we were having our heat wave when they hit 121 in BC, the town of Lytton, BC, which then, of course, burned down in a wildfire. And more recently, we have had re all time record high temperatures, not just record highs. Those are pretty common. All time record highs in Tokyo or in Japan, in Northern Ireland and in Turkey. And the list goes on for all other a lot of other kind of record temperatures as well. So let's talk about the so called infestation, OK, of heat domes. First of all, the heat dome itself is nothing new. The branding is new and they have become more intense. But we've got one over the central US right now. We are not under it. Thankfully, we're nice and cool. So that is number one. If we spin the globe over to Europe, we've got number two, as we mentioned, over northern Europe in Ireland, setting its all time record high temperature there. In between that one and the next one was the weather pattern that caused all of that tremendous flooding in Germany. So the problem is we get into a wave pattern like this. I'm calling it a wave pattern because if you look at this, these are the upper level winds. So I've got the colors, okay? It is literally a wave pattern around the hemisphere. This is classic meteorology 101, by the way. These are called Rossby waves after Carl Rossby, the father of modern meteorology, if we want to go really get into the weeds on this. So there's number two of our infestation. Here's number three. You could make an argument for another one over the uh, over the Midwest. So that could be three. That could be four. And then finally, another one here over the northern Pacific Ocean. All of these are not uncommon. We typically and this would be considered a four, maybe a five wave pattern. So we get these big waves of weather patterns all around the hemisphere. Usually there's three or four, four considered kind of a stable pattern, which means it's not going to change a lot. If there's more than that, the atmosphere gets uncomfortable and starts moving them all around. If there's fewer than that, they can actually retrogress or back up and go backwards. So that's kind of the basic premise of how the big picture weather patterns work around the around the globe. So it's not unusual to get four of these areas of high pressure or heat tones. What is unusual is their strength and their longevity. They have been very, very strong and they've been lasting a really long time in some cases. And when that happens, it just stays hot. Or in the case of Germany, stuck in between two of them, it just keeps raining and raining and raining. And we get some really severe weather because of this, because these things staying in place. So the fact that we've got four of these around the around the, the hemisphere, not unusual at all. But they are becoming stronger. So I'll go Capital Weather Gang on you and say it's a normal southern pa summer pattern, but on steroids because several of these high pressure systems or heat domes are much stronger and hotter than what we're used to seeing. And they're becoming more frequent due to something called Arctic or quasi resonant amplification. Now that theory of Arctic amplification has been around for a long, long time, put forth by Dr. Jennifer Francis at uh, Rector's University and then also Michael Mann at Penn State University. Basically, what it means is this as the climate is warming, especially with the Arctic warming faster than the lower latitudes, you don't have as much of a fast west to east jet stream. So things get wavier. And when that happens, they tend to stay put for a longer period of time. We call that a blocking pattern. And so you can get more warm air over one area for a long time. Conversely, in the wintertime, we can get cold air coming down in one spot for a long, long time if you're on the part of the pattern where you're getting the winds coming from north to south. So part of this, yes, Dan, I totally agree with. We are seeing them become stronger and more frequent, like the one we experienced back in late June. But to say there's an infestation of them around the planet right now, that's a good headline. Uh, so is summer on steroids. Thank you. I like that one. <laughs> I just came up with that. All right, Matt, thank you, you so much. Appreciate it.